For this video, I have compiled a list of some pretty cool tips and tricks for iOS 26. So grab your phone and follow along as you're definitely going to want to try these out. Starting off with number one is inside of the phone application. You know when you miss a phone call and you want to be reminded to call that person back, but 95% of the time you always forget? Well, luckily in iOS 26, there's now a feature built in natively that allows you to schedule a reminder. So open up the phone app and you'll see we have all of your calls down here. So if you wanna be reminded to call someone back, all you have to do is swipe on the call and you'll see we have an all new option that looks like a clock icon. If you press on this, you can choose in an hour, tonight, tomorrow, or just remind me later. If you click on remind me later, it's gonna automatically fill the person's contact name in the title of the reminder. And then you can choose if you wanna be reminded today, tomorrow, or anytime in the future. And you can also choose to assign a time to it if you want as well. This is very, very handy. And with this feature, you should never forget to call someone back ever again. Next up at number two, this one is for Apple Music. It's a pretty small feature, but I like using it nonetheless. So we have an all new gesture that allows you to quickly switch between songs in a few different modes. So here inside of music, you see we have this very small mini player at the bottom. If you wanna switch songs, you no longer just have to click on the skip button, but you can actually swipe on the mini player and you can see it's gonna switch the song just like this. As I'm doing it, you actually get haptic feedback on the phone as well to indicate that the song has switched. Also, when you're in the full screen player, you can do the exact same thing by swiping right here where the title is, and you can see it's gonna animate very nicely and you can switch songs just like this. Honestly, it's probably gonna be easier just to hit on the skip button. I'd say using it down here in the mini player is a little bit nicer, but it's kind of a nice quality of life feature built into iOS 26. Next at number three is for the camera. I've had so many people come to me and say, hey Michael, I updated my iPhone to iOS 26, but I can't find where my settings are. And I always tell them you can click on this little menu button on the top right. However, it's a little bit annoying, especially because on these large iPhones, when you have to click this button, uh, sometimes you're holding your phone with one hand and it's kind of difficult to hit this button all the way up here. Uh, but in iOS 26, all you have to do is swipe up from the black part of the camera UI and you get the exact same thing. Uh, this is infinitely easier than reaching all the way to the top of the display. Again, all you have to do is a swipe from the bottom like that. Okay, this next one is gonna save you guys a lot of headaches in the future. You know when you're on your lock screen and you wanna clear out your notifications by swiping on them, but half the time you end up opening up your camera? Well, luckily there's a toggle that you can set inside of settings that's gonna turn off that swipe action. So open up settings, then tap on camera, then scroll all the way to the bottom and you see we have this new toggle here that allows you to disable the screen swipe to open the camera. So this is the default behavior, a swipe is gonna open it obviously, but if I go ahead and turn it off, you can see now I'm on my lock screen, it's no longer gonna allow me to open up the camera. It was kind of redundant anyway, especially because the default button on the bottom right is usually camera, and also newer iPhones have the camera button anyway. Uh, so I find it kind of useless to have that enabled, especially since a lot of people are invoking it by accident. So I definitely recommend turning that setting on. Okay, next up, this one is very small. I don't think it's new in iOS 26, but it's something that I've been doing on my iPhone lately and I find it a very easy way to turn off my flashlight. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think this is stupid, but this is the way I've been doing it. So whenever I have my flashlight turned on, I use this button on the bottom left of my lock screen. However, when I wanna turn it off, uh, it's kind of annoying because you have to go all the way to the bottom and instead of tapping it, you have to press and hold just to shut it off. Uh, for me, what I've been doing is I do a little tiny half swipe to open up the camera and because you can't have the flashlight on when you're in the camera, it instantly shuts off the flashlight, even if you do a tiny swipe just like that to go into the camera. Uh, so for me, it might save me like half a second, but I find doing that tiny little gesture makes it a lot easier for me to turn off my flashlight in a pinch. And then obviously this feature kind of clashes with the one I just showed you before this where you would actually disable the swipe. So if you have disabled the swipe to open your camera, uh, that feature will not work to turn off your flashlight. All right, next up, this one allows you to customize the look of liquid glass on your iPhone. So when Apple came out with iOS 26, liquid glass is the all new design language. You see it in control center, you see it on the dock. It's pretty much everywhere throughout the entire UI. And some people really don't like it. They think that legibility is an issue. Luckily, there is sort of a fix now inside of settings. So click on settings, then scroll down and click on display and brightness. You can see here we have an option where it says liquid glass. If we click on this, we can change from clear 
to tinted. And you can see up here, there's a preview of what everything is going to look like, sort of. You can see on tinted, it's a bit more legible. If I go back to clear, you can see it's a bit more transparent. So if I go to clear, uh, let's go to music, for example, you can see my mini player at the bottom of the screen is very transparent and everything scrolling behind it is visible. And some people might find this distracting. However, if I go and change it to tinted and then open up music, you can see that it's a bit more readable and it's not really changing the look of the mini player as the UI elements go behind it. It's a very subtle change, but if you are having legibility problems in iOS 26, I would definitely recommend changing this over to tinted. However, I did have an idea and I think a lot of people had this as well online. I think Apple should have a slider. That way you can pick the exact level of liquid glass you want on your iPhone. That might be coming in a future software update, but for now, all we have is clear or tinted. All right, next up is a feature called local capture. Local capture allows you to record just your side of audio and video of a phone call or a video call. So this could be handy for content creators. I know a lot of people are making podcasts now just over Zoom or FaceTime. And for editing, it's very handy just to have your side of the audio and video in a much higher quality. Luckily in iOS 26, that is now an option you can turn on. So open up Control Center then press and hold to add a new toggle. Then you wanna search up here for local capture. You can see it lives right here. If I tap on it, the toggle is now here. One tap is gonna simply turn it on. So now my audio from a phone call, for example, is going to be saved on my phone. And then one tap is going to turn it off. If I press and hold, you can see I have a few more options. I can turn on audio only if I don't want my camera to be turned on. And you can also have a few more options inside of settings. So if you search for the exact same thing, local capture inside of settings, click on it right here. You can choose where you want those files to go. So right now I have it going to downloads by default, but you can choose any location in the files app on your iPhone to save that audio and video. Okay, next up, this one is awesome. You know on the iPhone how you can swipe from the edge of the screen to go back? Well, Apple has actually made this feature a lot better in iOS 26 because now you don't have to go to the very edge of the screen to swipe back. I can demonstrate this inside of settings. So if I click on a few different menus, let's say I wanna go back. Before I'd have to go all the way to the edge of the screen, but now I can simply start that swipe from the middle of the screen and I can do the exact same thing. Uh, this makes going back in any menu on your iPhone a lot better. I did notice in an application like music, for example, because there's a long list of songs, it doesn't really work because you can actually swipe on these songs to get various actions. But for example, if you are clicked inside of an album, it still works just like this. Okay, this next one I really, really like. I know Apple has been getting a lot of hate online on how much their AI just sucks, but sometimes there's a really handy AI feature that Apple doesn't really label as AI, but it comes in really, really handy. And this one lives inside of Photos. So Photos can now actually recognize sporting events and concerts from specific photos and videos. So take this photo for example, this is a Volbeat concert. You can see there's a little icon here at the bottom indicating that it recognized I was at a concert. If I swipe up, I can get more detail and you can see it says concert right here. If I click on it, this is where it gets really cool. It's gonna show me the uh, link to go to the artist on Apple Music. I can see the details of that concert, when it was, where it was. I can also see it on a map. It's gonna list all of their top songs. I can also go to some playlists and on top of that, it's gonna show me upcoming concerts for that artist as well. This is really handy. And like I said, it works for sporting events as well. All right, this next one is for iMessage. And this one is gonna save you guys a big headache in the future. You know when you're in iMessage and you're sending a photo to someone and you take the photo inside of iMessage, it gets really annoying a few days later when you open up your photos app and you see all of those photos that you were texting to someone and they're just kind of garbage photos and you don't really need them saved on your iPhone. It kind of looks like this. So I take a photo, let's say I sent it off to someone, but then I open up my camera or my photos rather, and you can see there's that photo I took and I just don't need it saved on my iPhone. Luckily, there is a new setting that you can turn off and this is amazing. So open up settings, then scroll down and click on camera, then scroll all the way to the bottom and you can see there's a toggle here that says save captures to photo library. If you turn this off, every time you take a photo from within messages, it's only going to stay inside of messages and it will not be saved to your photos. 
Okay, next up. In iOS 26, Apple has added a really cool option to allow you to quickly add reminders on your iPhone. So inside of Control Center, if you press and hold, then click Add a Control, you can search for reminders. This is all new for iOS 26. Once you add it, you are just one click away from adding a new reminder on your iPhone. And you can also program this to work with the action button on your iPhone as well. This is really sick. All right, the second to last feature I wanna show you is inside of Safari. So in iOS 26, Apple has redesigned the look of the tab bar in Safari. They call it a compact tab bar. I really don't like the way this looks, but uh, in settings, you can actually change it back to the way it was before in iOS 18, just like this. Uh, however, I actually kind of like the look of the compact tab bar. I just don't like the functionality. So I want to show you some tips and tricks on how you can actually make this compact tab bar work for you. So here inside of Safari, you might think to open up a new tab, you have to click on this button and then click on new tab. However, you can do this with one swipe, just like this, instantly open up a new tab. Also, you may be wondering, how do I close out of my tabs? It might require two taps. Again, before you think you have to tap on this, then tap on all tabs. However, you can actually do a double tap of the button on the bottom right to open up all of your tabs just like that. And the final feature I'll show you for iOS 26 is the ability to turn off full screen previews for your screenshots. A lot of people hated this, uh, that Apple changed it in iOS 26. Uh, when you take a screenshot, instead of going small to the bottom left of your screen, you can see it opens up an all new editing tab uh, right away. Uh, this is because Apple has added some AI features to screenshots and they want people to try it out. But a lot of people just don't care, including myself, and most of the time they just want to save the screenshot to their photos. Luckily, there is a way that you can do this. So open up settings, then you want to search for screen capture. It's right here. And then you can see we have full screen previews. If you turn this off and then you take a screenshot, you can see the behavior is back to normal going down to the bottom left corner. If you want, you can tap on it to go to the same page. But by default now, it's going to be a very small thumbnail in the bottom left of your iPhone, just as it was before in iOS 18. So that's going to do it. Hopefully you guys learned at least one new thing on your iPhone on iOS 26. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative or helpful or fun, anything, please drop a thumbs up. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.